So I'm about to introduce to you Steve Latham, okay? And Steve Latham did a 3,100 mile trip on his bicycle across the nation from the West Coast to the East Coast, from the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean. And he's here to share his story with you and uh, inspire you, hopefully, right? So we're going to go ahead and find him. Thank you, Robert. Robert found you, Stephen. And uh, and you can hear me? I can hear you. All right. We got Perfect. our technical issues resolved. So Yes. Yay. So I'm going to read. Stephen uh, very kindly gave me, I asked him for a little bit of a bio about his background, because a lot of people think when somebody does something this phenomenal, well, he must have been a triathlon and he must have, you know, been an <laughs> athlete when he was 20. Oh. So I'm going to read what Stephen wrote. I was born and raised in a small town in central Missouri, then moved to Wisconsin in the 80s, where I've lived since. I was never athletically inclined growing up. I was a clumsy and awkward youth and was always that last kid chosen in any pickup game of baseball or tag football. I studied several different subjects in college, worked as a semi-professional musician. I never knew that. You've got to tell me what, what, what uh, instrument you played. Spent most of my working years in finance was an associate pastor for a time at a Methodist church and also was a stay-at-home dad for a number of years. My husband did the same thing. The most challenging and rewarding task I've ever done. Uh, after my first marriage failed, I took up cycling as a form of therapy. I would cycle several miles every day to sort through my pain and depression, and I found that it worked. I was hooked. I've cycled cross-country and cross-country skied in numerous competitive events through the years. Usually I finish closer to the rear than to the front, but it doesn't really matter to me. Just being out there and a part of something with other like-minded people, that's what's really important. In the past few years, I've also taken up hiking and backpacking, which I love. It's something that puts you out there in the middle of nature itself. I've been married to my second wife, Jenny, for over 31 years. We have one child, our son, Elliot, who's 26 years old and is now married and just recently bought his first house. My, how time flies. Yes, it does. I have no intention of slowing down anytime soon. Now, this is why I invited Stephen for this, because he's going to encourage you guys. I'm also exploring the possibility of doing another bicycle tour next year, perhaps from Winnipeg, Canada to Key West, Florida, or maybe a long backpacking trip. My ultimate goal is to document my adventures and post them on social media in hopes that other older adults might see them and be inspired to think about health in a different and more proactive way. So. Stephen, we are going to go over the beautiful photographs that you gave to me. You're going to sort of briefly describe your trip with these wonderful pictures as a backdrop, and then um, we'll, we'll we'll talk for a moment or two, right? Let's do it. So let me uh, share my screen again. I'm going to remove myself from this and just you and share my screen. All right, so I've got your little script here printed out. Hopefully I can keep follow along. So here is photo one and I'll leave it up to you, Stephen. Okay, that's the uh, Pacific Ocean in San Diego where I started mm -hmm. and flip to the next. Yeah, and you started on March 23rd, right? Yeah, I started on March 23rd, that's correct. All right. And there's my fully loaded bike, weighted down the most heaviest bike I've ever ridden when I got on first time to try it out the front wheel would flip up. So I had to force it back down and just, yeah, a little unyieldy, but yeah. Uh, yeah. go on to the next. And that's the way east. At this point in time, I am scared, nervous, anxious. The only thing I know how to do is just start pedaling east and just do it one pedal stroke at a time. Mm -hmm. Next. Uh, and that's what awaited me moving out of uh, San Diego. About the first 40 miles of the trip, you climb an elevation from sea level to over 4,000 feet. It's pretty challenging and daunting, but yeah. I broke it up into small sections, did about 20 miles at a time, and I made it. Yeah, yeah. 4,000 foot elevation and 50 miles of travel. Wow. Yeah. It's, and that's what I had to descend into once I got up to those hills east of San Diego, the Imperial Valley of California, which was an interesting mix of desert like you see there, but also a lot of agriculture. Well, I now know where we uh, get our vegetables and the descent in there was, uh, was exhilarating and terrifying. Yeah, was descending high. from here, right? 
<laughs> what? Yeah. Ascending from here? Yeah. Although I think that's looking more south. And I think you oh, may okay. actually be looking into Mexico at that point. Okay. All right. But uh, yeah. I love this picture. This is one of my best photos of the whole trip. Uh, Saguaro cactus and a snow-capped mountain in the background. Where else but Arizona are you going to see that? Arizona was just beautiful. Just beautiful. You can move on there. And just so you know, I am moving along now in New Mexico. I never saw a welcome to Arizona sign, but the only way I knew I was in Arizona was by looking at my navigation apps. And yeah, but Arizona didn't welcome me, but New Mexico did. <laughs> and I love this photo. Windmills, I think, are just so photogenic. And if you look in the background, you can see just how remote and desolate this the American Southwest really is. Yeah, lots of land. Yeah, lots of land. And that was pretty much a lot of what uh, the Southwest was like, just a lonely, expansive road that just disappeared into the distance. Mm -hmm. And there I am going into Texas, and I'm going to be in Texas for a very long time. And uh, Texas comprises about a third of the entire route. So wow. yeah, for a month, I was in Texas. And this wow. is right at El Paso, too. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And you got written here. You remember one stretch where you traveled nearly 80 miles and only saw one tree. Yeah. And that's yeah. the next photo, I think, coming up. Yeah, there it is. OK. Uh, now, there were trees in some of the towns and some of the ranches, but nothing growing wild for about a 75, 80 mile stretch. And that was it. So I made sure I got a photo of it. Wow. And again, the land in West Texas, just very desolate and remote. You can't appreciate how desolate and remote it is unless you hike it or bike it. And then mm -hmm. people warned me about the hill country of Texas, and boy, were they right. Uh, that was one hill. That was about a 12% grade for about one mile stretch. Wow. And I have wow. to admit, I walked up that stretch. Mm -hmm. One of the Facebook posts that I put up, uh, one of the comments was, well, just consider it cross-training. And uh, actually, <laughs> it was it was hard just pushing a bike up that hill, but turning around and looking back at it, it just looks like it just drops off into the abyss. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I heard about the Longhorn cattle, but I never saw it until the last hour that I was in Texas. And there they were. And these two just seemed particularly interested and curious about what I was doing. I think they're probably thinking, well, we know that those humans are a little bit off, but uh, well, now <laughs> we know for sure. Yes, yes. And there I am, finally leaving Texas and going into Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Yeah, after a month in Texas, right? Yep. And there are some of the swamps and bayous that I saw at a state park in Louisiana. It was just, just beautiful and so picturesque. That is gorgeous. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't really want to know is. what's under that water, but. <laughs> I kept looking for alligators and uh, long, I never saw any. I was no? Kind of yeah, they, were, they were hiding. They were hoping you were going to go in the water. <laughs> yeah, I just saw in the chat, somebody asked how old I was when I did this trip. I was 65 years old. And I just uh, last month turned 66. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're going to talk with Steve for a minute after we show the pictures, but I wanted you guys to be inspired with these beautiful pictures. And there I am going into uh, Mississippi. There are eight states along the along the way that I uh, went through. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the boot hill of uh, Mississippi and Alabama, right along the Gulf Coast. And I just love this picture of the red umbrellas. The it's gorgeous beach and the Gulf yes. Coast. Yes, beautiful. And now I'm going into Alabama. Don't spend mm -hmm. a lot of time in Alabama, but I was mm -hmm. there. And there I am going into Florida. I love all the stickers that people posted up on this uh, this welcome to Florida sign. Yeah, yeah. That's and if sweet. you notice, my bike looks a little bit different. My wife met me in Fredericksburg, Texas, and we spent some time together there. And uh, when I was there, I shipped home all of my camping equipment because I figured I was done with camping at that point. It would be staying in motels along the way. And it sure lightened up the bike. It was mm -hmm. much easier to, uh, to navigate on that bike with the uh, reduced weight. And I love this. This is the Gulf of Mexico from around Pensacola, Florida, uh, in the early morning light. And that's the last time I see the Gulf of Mexico. 
I head inland into the panhandle of Florida after that. And I love this picture. It was starting to get hot. It's June and I would leave very early in the morning to beat the heat and humidity and also the thunderstorms that always seemed to fire up in the afternoon. But you would get pictures and views like this, just the fog and the mist at sunrise. It was just, it was just gorgeous. It is a beautiful, beautiful picture. Yeah. And there I am, made it to the Atlantic Ocean and dipping my tire into the Atlantic. Yeah, yeah. And you crossed Florida. I mean, you could have kind of cheated and gone to the Gulf of Mexico and called it quits, but you kept going. No, so. I made it all the way to the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. That's right at St. Augustine, Florida. And there I am, victory pose. And, uh, you know, I look at these pictures and I have to pinch myself. And you notice that the bike has changed again. My wife came down and met me for about the last 10 days in the panhandle of Florida. And uh, with her along and following along in the Odyssey, just jettisoned all the gear I could. And mm -hmm. I'm put loose and fancy free with my bike yes. in that photo. Yes, and yes. I look at these photos and I pinch myself and I think, I really did that. I really did. did that. Well, I worked with you before you took off and we're going to talk in just a minute, but yeah. Okay. I was so, I was rooting for you, Steve, and I knew you were going to do it, so. In fact, one of the, uh, I should email to you that after this talk, I can uh, give you the link to my Facebook page, because I post it on Facebook nearly every day. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yes, yes, and I just, very quickly, I just wanted to show people, Stephen took some pictures of some wildflowers. Oh, the wildflowers. Are these not good. gorgeous? This will just take about 10 seconds, but look at these, look at the colors. Look at how they beautiful. Were, I mean, these could be these could be like win prizes, Stephen. These pictures are so gorgeous. Well, they were just ubiquitous <laughs> all the way from California Colors, to Florida. Just the everywhere. whole fields, yeah. just gorgeous, gorgeous. The cactus flowers. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's just a small sampling of the wildflower pictures that I have. And this is just a small sampling. I think I took yep. between 400 to 500 pictures and all. Yeah, yeah. And I, I just I have yet few, to go through all that. And I hours just put a video. few up here, but wow. I have so, yet to go through all of it. I'm still trying to comprehend what I did. Yes, yes. All right. So, Robert, would you mind highlighting me so Stephen and I are together while we chat here for a couple of minutes? I um, I just I just want to tell everybody, you and I met because you wanted to work with me you wanted to try to take care of any physical musculoskeletal stuff, especially knowing you were preparing for this trip so that you could maybe negate that bent forward for mm -hmm. 30, yeah. 100 miles. Yeah, bent over on a bicycle. Right, right. So, but tell everybody um, kind of your story as far as the changes you've made in your life and the impact they've had and sort of what inspired you to do this and to share okay. it. Yeah, I think we have to talk about the diet some because about 10 years ago, my wife and I made the decision to switch to a whole food plant based diet and uh, what a difference it made. Uh, previously, I had been so constipated. In fact, I had little jars of Miralax in the bathrooms in the kitchen all over the house as a reminder take your Miralax so you won't be constipated. Yeah. That's After we switched to a it. whole food plant based diet, it's just gone. No issue. Yes. Very rarely will I have an issue with constipation now. Yes. And from what I've read and gathered, it's it's really a serious health issue. So I'm right. glad it's behind me. And your health overall, are you on any medications? Do you have any diseases? Not any medications. I do take a medication on an as-needed basis for uh, anxiety, but okay. that's very rarely. Okay. Maybe for pain, I might take it, set of or a NASED, but not very often. But very rarely. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the next thing was my cholesterol. I had a very high cholesterol beforehand. I was kind of pushing up close to 300. Mm. But after I switched to a whole food plant based diet, the last time it was measured, which was a little over a year ago, it was 170. So that's yeah. that's much better. And that's important to me. And that dietary time. change has radically reduced your risk of an event a lot better than a medication would anyway. Yes. Right. And my father had three heart attacks, so in support. So we pretty much stick to a whole food plant based diet. I don't want to mess around with right, right. Beautiful. family history. Beautiful. Beautiful. And uh, I guess the last thing that uh, was uh, I lost weight. I mm -hmm. wasn't trying to lose weight, but 20 pounds just kind of went poof. So yeah. I dropped from about one. 
75, 180 to around now where I am about 155 to 160. So. Excellent. Excellent. Beautiful. So, so what inspired you to take this trip? Uh, there were many, I've always wanted to do a long bicycle tour like this, but uh, I think one of the reasons too, is I just want to go out there now and do things like this to help kind of be an inspiration to older adults like myself. And yeah, yeah. Life doesn't have to stop when you're in your 60s, right? What's that? Life doesn't no. have to stop when you're in your 60s. Not nearly close. So yes. if we have time, I want to go through some of the examples of some of the uh, athletes that inspire me. Mm -hmm. well, one yeah. thing I wanted to mention before we get to that is that I want to talk about arthritis. Ah, Last okay. year, I was diagnosed with osteoarthritis, and it was a devastating blow to me. I thought, well, this is the end of any dreams about cross-country bike tour. But as we talked in our uh, sessions together, you indicated that it was probably more due to an injury that I sustained than the arthritis itself than the pain that I was Because it had impacted the biomechanics of your body. Yeah. 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 Because I fell on, fell and twisted my knee badly. And I think it just took several weeks for it to heal and the pain eventually dissipated. But I did go to an arth orthopedic physician and had x-ray tape x-rays taken and there was arthritis in the knee and from what i could saw and what he pointed out it looked kind of like i had a gnarly knee there are a couple of bone spurs in there and also arthritis in the low back but uh it has slowly dissipated and i was concerned about on the uh, bike tour would that come back and it really really didn't bother me a few mornings i would start out not feel a little bit of pain in that right knee but it quickly would go away and just mm -hmm. wasn't an issue so mm -hmm. yes yes awesome so don't be discouraged if you have a uh, diagnosis yeah. of osteoarthritis yeah. and from what i found the more i move the less it hurts and the less i move the more it hurts and as i know you have heard the mean motion is lotion so yes i intend to keep on moving absolutely and then since you got home from this trip you've done another one you and your wife Right. Oh, yeah. We uh, bicycled a tandem bicycle across Iowa in an event called RAGBRAI. That's mm -hmm. an acronym for registers. What would that be? Registers Annual Great Bike Ride Across Iowa. Mm -hmm. And this is an event. We did it with about 20 to 25,000 other cyclists. So, yeah, it yeah was, that's uh, exciting. And yeah. let me tell you, Iowa is not flat. <laughs> I think we added up the elevation or climbing and it added up to about over seven days, 16,000 feet. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, your wife is quite a trooper to join you on that. So, yep. yes. Yes. All right. What else did you want to share? You wanted to share your inspirations. You got some people there that have done yes. some pretty amazing things. Uh -huh. And I'm going to have links for people if you want to check these people out and look at pictures and read the articles. Right. But yeah. I shared Steve a number gonna... of articles with yeah. uh, Eileen and so yes, be sure yes. to check out the links. These people are very inspiring. Yes. First two I want to kind of go over are the uh, two guys who hiked the Appalachian Trail. And that kind of is special to me because I have hiked the Appalachian Trail. I've hiked it in uh, sections of Pennsylvania and uh, Maryland, West Virginia, Northern Virginia. And that's kind of considered the... Uh, the easy part of the Appalachian Trail, but when I hiked it, I didn't see anything easy about it. So I think it's just a testimony to how difficult that trail really is. And for those of you that don't know, it's a trail, a continuous hiking trail that stretches from northern, uh, north central Georgia, all the way to uh, central Maine. And it's about 2,200 miles long. So wow. yeah. difficult, difficult endeavor. But the oldest, Two of the oldest men who have set records in uh, 2017, a man named Dale Sanders hiked the Appalachian Trail at the age of 82, and what at that time was considered to be the oldest person to have completed a through hike, hiking the trail completely from one end to the other. Wow. 2100 mile trail. Wow. Yeah, at 82. But just a few years later, in 2021, a uh, MJ Everhart uh, did it at the age of 83. So wow. that's just astounding. Yeah, it is. I mean, there are so many people out there that just blow out of the water that nonsense about, well, you know, at your age and, oh, you are getting older, you know, and, you know, all that nonsense about declining as we age. It's not true. We've received it as truth. 
but we, we got to shake that off. Right. And yep. start, start yep. realizing what's really true. Look at what you did. I mean, yeah, it's at awesome. The age of 65. And I met another man out there who was the age of 67, but he was biking only from San Diego to El Paso. Mm. So, but still yeah. that's yeah. over a thousand miles. So. Yeah. So only, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't bike, so I don't know if I could do it, but <laughs> it's that specificity of training. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you did notice that you weren't all curled over when you got off the bike because of the work that you were doing to, to improve that. Right. So yeah, it's, it helps. It definitely does help the Beautiful. exercises you've given me. All, all right. Well, um, before we say goodbye, I'd like to ask, is there anybody here who has a question for Stephen who would like to ask him something about his trip before we say goodbye? And I might catch you off guard because um, I didn't- Well, one thing you. people may be thinking about, no, I did not use an e-bike. Okay. It was entirely, I call it a me bike, powered entirely by me. So. Okay. So, so no, assistance. another thing that I did that I'm proud of is I pretty much stuck to a whole food plant-based diet the entire way. And that's what people are asking. What were you eating? What were you eating? So, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you had, you couldn't carry all your food. <laughs> no, no, you can't. So it was difficult, but not impossible. Mm -hmm. I, every few days I had to sit down with the, uh, my phone and go to Google maps and see, well, what motel can I stay at or. Mm -hmm. I was close to a grocery store or a decent restaurant. So I just remember one time in El Paso, it was about a half mile, three quarter mile walk to a uh, Walmart super center. Mm -hmm. And along the way, there were about seven or eight fast food places that had, you know, I could buy chicken wings or cheeseburgers, but your taste buds change over the years. I had no desire to do that whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just, wasn't food to me. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to get and have my produce and yes, beans yes. and frozen vegetables that I had. So yeah. Oh, we've got somebody here. How long did it take? I don't think we said the exact length. Oh yeah. Uh, St. Augustine. I made it to St. Augustine on June 17th. So a little yes. under three months. It was 87 days out there. Of that, about 19 days were rest days and days just to explore my surroundings, mm -hmm. to take some time yeah, off. Because you weren't in a hurry. It wasn't It wasn't a race, right? It no, was a, it, it wasn't was a race journey. at all. I took yeah. my time, was very deliberate about it. So And enjoyed I, yourself. Yeah. yeah. Somebody here is saying, tell us about the camping part. I only camped out twice. Okay. I would say the camping opportunities out there weren't really what I call wilderness experiences. In fact, one time when I camped out, I had I-8 a few hundred yards on one side and the train tracks 100 yards on the other side. And I swear trains came barreling through every hour. So I didn't get much sleep that night. And there were trucks barreling down I-8 all night long. So, Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. All right, Stephen, was there anything that we didn't mention that you were looking forward to share? I think we covered everything. Or... I think we covered most everything. I just encourage people to look at uh, some of the articles that I posted out about some of the mm -hmm. people that inspire me that we didn't have time to get to includes a 92-year-old woman who still is running triathlons. Her story is wonderful, yeah. as well as a man who bicycled for an hour at the age of 105. He's amazing. Mm. Just mm. amazing. Wow. So, yeah, Age 105. Is, yeah. Yes, yes. Age is no excuse. If we take care of our bodies the way that you have outlined in this series, that mm -hmm. there's... Yeah, I love it. I love it. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining well, us. Thank you, thank Eileen. Thank I appreciate you. you giving me the opportunity to come here yeah. and speak. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, we're going to put links to your Facebook group. Stephen is going to be starting a YouTube channel and he's going to be posting stuff. He's 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 passionate about about getting people out there to know that life doesn't stop. Right. Mm -hmm. Until you stop. So, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, there's a meme we have in cycling that you don't uh, stop cycling because you grow old. You grow old because you stop cycling. There you go. There you go. Yeah. If you stop, they throw dirt on you. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you again. Well, and, thank you, Arlene. Uh, I, will, I will. We will see be talking you and everyone soon. tomorrow. Yes. Yes. Thank you.